Hello everyone, my dog is here distracting me. He kept me up until 12.30 in the morning last night. I'm just looking at him as he's getting ready to snooze all day, just thinking that must be nice. I know the holidays are coming up and this is a time of year where money is on a lot of our minds and I wanted to make this video because I've been talking a lot about money on my podcast called One Step. I had Chelsea Fagan from The Financial Diet as one of my guests and we had such a great conversation about money. In a lot of ways it was really uncomfortable but that conversation has really sparked a lot of reflection in me. I've been having conversations about money with friends and people that I know in work settings and it's been really liberating. Today I'm going to be sharing a piece of my financial story and it's going to be all about how my spending habits have changed, especially in the last 10 plus years. So I'm going to start off with all of the before. So this is past Ingrid. When I was growing up, both of my parents were working, but my mom was really the main breadwinner. She had to support a family of four people, and so that meant there wasn't a lot of extra spending money. It was really focused on the essentials. And so when I started making my own money, even just having like a part-time job, I was just so eager to spend it. On the podcast, Chelsea actually talked about a similar experience where she described money being like liquid when she was younger because it she would get it and then it would just like go into spending and that's exactly how I operated when I was younger. And then when I started making a full-time living off of my YouTube channel, it was still very much the same thing. I definitely saved a little bit more, but I was still really eager to spend and I was very starry eyed when it came to nice things. And one of the big reasons why I wanted these nice things is because I thought having these nice things would make me seem powerful and successful and independent and like a boss and attractive and whatever, like fill in the blank. I associated these nice things with positive attributes, but it was very much focused on how other people would view me and not how I was viewing myself. And because I was so focused on how I was viewed by other people, this meant that I made more impulse purchases. There would be that like rush of the initial purchase and then when I would be walking out of the store, I would feel guilty or when I would go home, I would feel guilty. And that's really just an unsustainable roller coaster, at least for me to be on. Because I was making a lot of impulse purchases, this meant that my priorities were just not really in order. So I was more willing to spend my money on unnecessary things over the essentials. So it was like completely opposite from the way that I was used to growing up where money went into the essentials and there was a small pool that was sometimes left over for, you know, enjoyment and gifts and things like that. And I just totally flip-flopped that and put most of my money into unnecessary things and tried to push away the essentials. So an example of this is I would buy makeup and clothing over paying my car bill. I specifically remember this and my mom would get so mad at me because she was just like, this is so irresponsible. What are you doing? And I think my car payment at that time was around $300 and that was something that I could pay based off of my part-time job, but I really had to put most of what I was making in that part-time job into my car payment, which I didn't do because I was spending it on, you know, makeup and clothing or whatever I was spending it on at that time. I would just assume that my mom would pick up the bill and she wasn't in a position where she could pay that bill. And as you might be able to tell, I spent more on things than I did on experiences. And this meant I was also spending 
more time thinking about buying things than I was thinking about the people in my life. And because my mind and my money were both completely tied up in thinking about what's the next thing that I want so I can appear this way to other people. My relationships really suffered and I wasn't having shared experiences with other people and it was really, really isolating. Then I started making more money and I was able to have savings and I was able to pay my bills and my priorities were kind of like adjusting themselves and like falling into a place that felt better for me. But then I got into this mindset of, well, I can afford this thing, so I should have this thing. And I think that is just something I've been thinking about in general, especially when it comes to women. We're often told that, well, we can have these things or we can do these things. And so we should do all of these things. And that was like very much a lot of the messaging that I was receiving from the media, social media, TV, films, people who were around me. It was very much like, well, you can, and so go for it. Um, and so that was justification enough for me. The consequences of past Ingrid's behavior actually followed me for years. And this included ruining my credit because I ruined my credit when I was 20 and in my early 20s and it took years to repair. So it wasn't until I was, you know, like 24, 25 where I really came back from that damage that I had done. And during that same time period in my early 20s, I had also accumulated debt and I would wake up every single morning worried about money. My heart would be racing and I would have so much anxiety and it felt like I was just going into a panic every morning when I woke up. And this is partially because of my spending habits, but it's also because of my upbringing. There are elements there that caused me to worry and have stress around money. And if you want to hear more about that part of my story, you can listen to the podcast episode called The Money That Changed Everything. I also didn't understand the deeper why behind my purchases. And I think if you've watched any of my earlier haul videos, haul videos were definitely just a genre, especially in early YouTube days. But for me, you know, I have complex memories around especially the early haul videos that I was doing because I definitely felt pressure, especially as YouTube became my career, to spend my money on things so I could make a haul video. And there was definitely that initial rush of excitement, like going to the store, getting the things, coming back, shooting the video. But then when I would turn off my camera, I would be alone surrounded by all of these things, feeling guilty, and I felt really lonely and just really bad on the inside. And that piled up over the years. While I do have like sad memories about like turning off the camera, I also have a lot of compassion for that younger Ingrid. She was doing the best that she could with the information that she had, which Women don't get a lot of information when it comes to financial literacy and in this completely new and foreign world that was so different from the way that I was also brought up as well. So now let's get into the changes that I have made around money. Now when I make money, I'm more eager to save it or invest it in something that is long term for myself. So this could mean anything from like a piece of clothing that is going to last me years and years and years. Or it could be something like buying my place in New York City. I also use the money that I make now to do things like financially help out my mom. For me, you know, a big part of growing up has been healing my relationship with my mom and it makes me feel really fulfilled knowing that 
I can give something back to her that is really meaningful because she worked her ass off for me when I was growing up and through all of the hard moments that we went through in life together. And I just feel like, well, this is the least I can do for my mother and I'm in a position to do that. And so I'm doing it. Don't get me wrong. I still like nice things. But now I've created my own definition for what I consider a nice thing. And I'm not using, you know, the culture's idea of what a nice thing is or someone else's idea of what a nice thing is. This is my definition of what nice things are. For a long time, I would automatically associate something that was luxury or expensive with being nice, but that is not the case anymore. Something that's a luxury item or really expensive doesn't automatically mean that it's nice and that I want it. So an example is, you know, my place now is surrounded by both of my parents' artwork. You can actually kind of see blurry in the background one of my mom's paintings back there over here and over here and over here and over here. I have my dad's artwork hanging up and those are absolutely priceless to me. So that's a huge, huge shift. If you've been watching my videos, especially for the last couple of years, then you have definitely noticed that I make way less impulse purchases. And I actually made a whole video about how my shopping habits have changed. Oh, got a little music going by. <laughs> That's not to say that I don't make any impulse purchases anymore because I feel like that would take a lot of delight out of my life. And I think there is something really enjoyable about being spontaneous, but the difference is, the difference is now I have a better sense of what I need, what my priorities are, and what I'm realistically going to use or enjoy over a period of time. An example of this is, I was in Paris with Erica in September and I gave myself a budget for what I was allowed to spend if something happened to come up. I wasn't looking for anything super particular. I was just open to the idea of, you know, if there's something that comes up within this budget, I will let myself have it. And we went to some vintage stores while we were in Paris and I was looking through the racks and there were a couple pieces that spoke to me and they were both 12 euros each. And I was like, cool, these are two things that I would definitely wear all the time since getting them. I have worn them a ton. They were whimsical and delightful to me. They weren't anyone else's definition of stylish, but my own. And I think that is really, you know, what I'm looking for now when I am shopping. I'm looking for that magic and creativity behind a purchase, not just a purchase to be making a purchase. Probably the biggest shift is essentials come first, and that is a non-negotiable for me. So, you know, paying my mortgage, paying my other bills that I have, buying myself food, taking care of Tato, like those are the absolute priorities for me. And anything else is like extra. Don't you just love how Tato made it into a priority after keeping me up last night? Another huge shift that has happened is just because I can afford something doesn't mean that I'm going to buy it. So now, I am the one who is deciding what my should be purchases are going to be. And I'm not being influenced by what other people are telling me I should do or what I should have or what I should look like or all the shoulds. Just get out of here, shoulds. I'm gonna figure out what my should should be and I'm gonna define that for myself. And that, Ultimately, I think that is like a huge, huge thing that has really empowered me and really helped me to own my financial story and, you know, the path that I want to be taking in my life. I think the last and probably the biggest, biggest shift for me 
is that I understand the deeper why behind my purchases. And so I always go through this three point checklist with myself, whether it's like consciously or subconsciously, I feel like I'm always going through this list when I'm thinking about making a purchase. And this gets me to my deeper whys. So the first thing that I ask myself is, do you want or need this thing, whatever the thing is? Then I ask myself, why is this the moment to make this purchase? I think timing is also a huge thing to consider when it comes to spending money, at least for me. The last thing is, how is this investing in my long-term well-being? And this could be physical, it could be emotional, it could be functional, and maybe the answer is you know this is a short-term delightful purchase like i'm gonna buy donuts for myself and that's gonna delight me in the moment but i think a donut a donut a donut why do i keep saying it that way a donut may not be nutritionally valuable to my body but it is an emotional experience for me that for me is an example of how something in the moment and seemingly short term can actually be long term i hope you enjoyed hearing you know part of my financial story and the shifts that I've made in my spending habits. And this is something that I really wanted to do because I know what it feels like to experience pressure when it comes to how you should be spending your money and how other people think you should be spending your money. Especially with the holidays, we're inundated with a lot of information about things that we can be buying. But I think the thing that we can control is how we respond to those things and we can make good decisions for ourselves or at the very least better decisions for ourselves that are more in line with our long-term values and goals. I would love it if in the comments you would share a shift you have made in your spending habits or maybe a shift that you want to make that you're currently working on. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe because I will have more videos coming your way. And why did I just stop talking? Oh, hit the bell button so you're notified when I post new videos because that's the thing I do. I post new videos on Friday and I'll see you next week. Bye everyone.